this video we're going to continue looking at the military street bridge and in our last video we saw it transform from this drawbridge here to a bow bridge that uh, was a pivot bridge or a swing bridge and then of course to a truss bridge that was also a swing bridge. In 1905 the city of Port Huron hired two bridge engineers to examine this structure and both reached the same conclusions. The bridge was subject to excessive wear and tear because it was not designed for the trolley and heavy vehicular traffic, plus the combined effort, uh, effects of rust and bumping from vessels and weakened the structure. They recommended replacement. And in February 1906, W. Phelps, a Port Huron's engineer at the time, produced plans for a new bridge which would provide a 40-foot uh, roadway and two 10-foot sidewalks. The city took no action. The city of Port Huron could choose among three basic designs for movable bridges. Another swing span which turned 90 degrees on a central pier, a vertical lift bridge which required expensive machinery to lift the movable span straight up, or a basque counterbalance drawbridge. Given the need for a wider bridge, and the narrow width of the Black River, another swing span was never a realistic option. Several types of bascue bridges emerged in the early 1890s, but Chicago was a major center of new designs. The Military Street Bridge is an example of the Strauss bascue design. And although the Grand Trunk Railroad Bridge is an example of the bascue design, it's not the design that they chose for the Military Street Bridge. Joseph Strauss was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and studied engineering uh, subjects at the University of Cincinnati. Even though the university did not have a formal degree program in engineering, he joined the prestigious bridge engineering firm of Ralph Majeski in Chicago in 1902. After his suggestion that bridge counterweights be made of concrete instead of cast iron fell on deaf ears, he established his own consulting firm, Joseph Strauss and Company. The strauss Basque Bridge Company of Chicago became the premier engineering firm in the United States specializing in Basque bridges. Strauss designed about 400 bridges altogether and roughly 375 of these were Basque's. He built three variations of this general type of Basque bridge. The overhead counterweight, which you can see here. The heel trunnion, which is uh, basically what the uh, Grand Trunk Railroad Bridge is. And what they finally selected for the Military Street Bridge, the underneath counterweight design. Mr. Strauss's design for the Military Street Bridge will not be the design that people will remember him for. He designed another little bridge that you might be familiar with called the Golden Gate Bridge. Mr. Strauss was a man of vision. He said that I've always dreamed of raising a span across the Golden Gate. And he did. The city of Port Charon proceeded cautiously in having a new military street bridge built. It wasn't until late April 1912 that the city commission awarded a contract for the bridge. To pay for the project, the city of Port Huron issued $75,000 of bridge bonds in mid-September. Construction did not proceed on schedule in 1912. Uh, in late September, the contractor began to remove the old span the streetcar operator had to reroute his lines over the nearby 7th Street Bridge, while the contractor built a pontoon bridge for pedestrians just west of Military Street. The contractor found that the piles driven in 1884 were in such excellent condition that he could use them for the coffer dam needed for building the new abutment. A friend of mine sent me this photograph here, and uh, I just love it uh, for a couple different reasons. One, it's the only photo I've ever seen where the bridge is completely out the, in between the two sides, the north and south. And two, uh, it gives you a good idea of what the shoreline looks like, uh, which wasn't much to write home about. And three, it's the only photograph I've ever seen of the Port Sharon County Savings Bank at that location. But we'll look a little closer at the bank in another video. There was one other picture, this one here. It's not very clear and you really can't see the river, but you can see the old uh, 
structure of the old bridge being taken out here and all the pilings were there. And you can probably identify some of the buildings as looking the same way as Salva Military. This bridge was plagued with legal action, delays, lawsuits. The city threatened to take over the project because they didn't feel that the contractor was moving fast enough. The contractor was being fined $25 a day because of the delays. Subcontractors were threatening to quit and take their equipment back with them, which included pumps and some very important equipment. Finally, the city and the bonding company uh, paid all the help uh, that the contractor had, and so the bridge was finally finished. The original deck of the bridge consisted of wooden paving blocks, which experienced so much uneven expansion and contraction that by the late 1940s, two spans or leaves no longer met when the bridge was in the lowered position. In December 1950, the State Highway Department awarded a contract in the amount of $28,580 to SC Ottawed to refloor the bridge. He removed the paving blocks and the timber subflooring and built a concrete uh, and steel subfloor topped by an asphalt pavement. I always thought that this fourth bridge here at Military Street was a very unique bridge in the design. Not so much because of the way the bridge worked, but I guess just because of the overhead trolleys, it just uh, none of the other bridges had that. It would appear that this postcard came out just after the bridge was built, because it says, new. Military Street Bridge, Port Huron, Michigan. The thing about a Basque Bridge is that they open quite rapidly, so it didn't tie up traffic uh, for near as long as the old swing bridges did. And also, the bridges didn't have to be completely open to let some of the ships go past. The original operator's house was a timber frame rectangular building and it measured 10 feet by 11 feet with a hip roof. Heated uh, was a coal-burning stove. The highway department replaced it in 1977 with a slightly larger 10 by 16 uh, frame building with a pitched roof equipped with electric heat. Remember the third bridge, the one just before uh, the one we've been looking at, and how narrow it was? Two streetcars could barely pass through without touching. You can see right here uh, the narrowness of the bridge. It was only 18 feet wide. And comparing it to the new bridge here, uh, you've got a 40 foot wide bridge and you have plenty of room for the streetcars to pass each other with room left over. Plus quite large pedestrian walks as well. Also, this bridge was built uh, much better than the old bridge was. It took a lot more abuse from the automobile industry, which was coming into vogue about that time. And of course, the streetcars, uh, the rumbling of those going across the bridge every day, uh, takes a toe on a bridge. The old bridge just needed to worry about horse and buggies. I just found this photo, and I think it's a very interesting photo. It gives you a really good look at the, uh, the structure above the bridge for the streetcars. And it also gives you a unique view from the street level of the automobile going past on the bridge. A couple of things you might note here. Number one is the uh, ferry, the Sheboygan, which later became the city of Port Charon, uh, docked at the ferry dock. And two uh, is the railing. It was a very unique railing on this bridge, and it was there for years. Here it is from the opposite side, but it, it added to the uniqueness of the bridge and uh, made it, I think, a beautiful bridge. Here's a close-up of that uh, guard rail. It was wrought iron and it had a beautiful uh, lattice uh, work underneath the, uh, the top guard rail part of it. And I can remember as a boy, one of the two things I really remember about this bridge is 
Every time I went on that bridge, I would run my hand over the top. It was so smooth on that railing. Run my hand over the top. Even when I was an adult, I couldn't go over that bridge. It just attracted me for some reason. I just loved to run my hand. I guess we weren't too concerned about germs back then. The second thing I remember about this bridge is walking over it. It was a boarded uh, walkway. And you could uh, look down while you're walking. And you could see the river below you. And then you got to the middle there and you had a little bit of a gap. You could really see the river. And it was pretty neat, I thought. And of course, if you had the time, it was always fun just to be against the railing and look out and see what was happening in Black River. Quite often, there was something interesting. And if not, you could always look at the ferries going back and forth. And of course, when the bridge went up, you were pretty much forced to look out on Black River. And if you were lucky, you might see something like this go under the bridge. I hesitate at putting this picture in because it's not really the bridge, but it is right next to the bridge, and this was uh, years before this. Uh, you can see this diver getting ready to look like they're putting in a new water line. Uh, but the reason I was so interested in this picture is what's in the background, and that is this uh, photograph has the original Ballantine store in it, which is across the street from the one that uh, we're familiar with, and you can see the sign right there, Ballantine. And across the street, where the Ballantine store was for years, uh, it looks like a uh, wine and liquor store. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Over the years, there's been several improvements made to the bridge and uh, one complete uh, rework of the bridge. But uh, the bridge today doesn't <laughs> resemble at all the bridge uh, of uh, yesteryear. I guess that's a good thing. One of those improvements was the operator house. As you can see here, it looks almost like a condo compared to the original one. And inside this control house, you have three switches. Up, down, and stop. Well, maybe not three. A few more than three. Looks pretty complicated, actually. There's been a lot of history to go over this span of water. Someone posted this photograph of the Blue Water Festival parade this year. And I got to thinking, uh, when I saw this picture of the parade, two things. Number one, why are they going the wrong way? Because when I was growing up, the parade always went from south to north, not north to south. And the second thing I was thinking of was how much uh, history has gone over uh, this span, the different parades that have taken place over the years. This isn't exactly a float, but it is a car advertising the YWCA. This photo was taken in 1948. This photograph shows the World War I uh, soldiers marching through downtown in 1917. They were called Doughboys. Note the previously uh, bridge that we've been looking at, uh, the one that had the overhead for the streetcars. It was only about four years old when this picture was taken. The crowds, uh, they look about four deep. Uh, folks used to come from all over the area back then before television and internet and organized sports. It was a pretty big deal. So I guess you could say that the Military Street Bridge has seen some improvement over the years. In our next video, we'll look at a couple more bridges on Black River.